So just to recap, in case you have not seen the first Gen 3 repair or pair number two, we had several of these BMS boards that had no power. After a brief time troubleshooting these boards, we realized we had a transformer issue. So checking across this capacitor for this bus or rail voltage, we had none. Coming off of this transformer output here on the top left, like this, with the board out, if we go to ohms, we did show that we had an open coil here. So in the first two videos, there was more than one board that we removed the transformer on. So just low melt solder, removing the transformer. We had a known working transformer from a donor board. Put it back on the board to be repaired. And we did have success. So in the first video we repaired three of these and the second video had some acting a little bit differently but they all did have transformer issues and one of those boards were repaired in the last video we were successful getting the bus voltage or rail voltage up all rails checked good went to plug this board in to test with the same pack that we've been testing with the whole time working with the gen 3s and on this one it was a no-go. Blinking red. I thought I had a connection issue or something here. I'm pushing on connectors. If we hold the button down, we're getting the alternating red and green. So definitely thinking it has a cell issue. I do feel some warmth on the board, but it seems to be just coming from the LEDs themselves as they are fairly high wattage. I did spend some time looking at the pins and connectors thoroughly. Felt like the pack was fine because it had been used previously. As mentioned on several other boards, the pack was a known good pack to me. Double check my rail voltage, everything is good. So then I decided to connect a previously tested board. This one in particular was repair number four. It's the one I had just tested minutes previously in that number two video. And we're going green and then red. So we really do have a pack issue here. It's not just the connector on that last repair board. So it's probably not in this board here at all. We either have a wiring issue or a connector issue on the pack itself. So one of the last things I wanted to do was take the very first repair board and let's just double check with it because we knew it was good for sure. And it does go green and then it does go red. So we're picking up a cell issue with this repair board as well. These boards are acting a little bit differently with the flashing lights, but they are still showing a cell issue for sure. So I'm definitely going to have to dig into this pack a little deeper. So one thing I want to show here in this video is get one of the older Gen 2 boards like so. This is just one that I removed the transformer from, by the way, and I hope this shows up well on camera. But this board has very good screen printing and test points on the board to go around and check your individual cells once connected around here like so. As we see here in this board layout that was shared with us by David Keeler on my Facebook group called On The Bench, we see here we have test point ground. We can start here at B1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six seven and on the other side of the board we can start with eight go around the nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and fourteen so all fourteen cells can be monitored and that board layout does show us where it goes to the connectors so we connect this up and that way we'll get our ground reference back to here and actually i believe b14 comes from this connector as well if i remember correctly i'm going to go ahead and separate this housing i have removed the four screws I have also removed the two screws from the connector. So it's just two Phillips screws here removed so I can get this out of the way. Not always necessary, but for me to lay it flat and to be able to show it on camera, it is necessary. And you can see here on this board, a test point ground and all the way around B1, all the way through B7. We'll just bring over our meter on DC volts. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera here the best I can with my small leads. But if we get on this test point ground, 
and hopefully you can see this here if I try to stay out of the way you see this B1 test point here B1 4.07 then of course it's just gonna double as you go up like so and then if you want to you can go in between them to just get your individual between the two 4.07 4.07, 4.07, we want to see that all the way around, 4.07, now we got to go from 7 to 8, so this is 7 here, and we got to go across to 8 as shown earlier, it's right under the connector on the left, 408, these cells are extremely well balanced, B9, and that is not good. That's a red flag right there. It went down instead of up. So let's go between eight and nine respectively. And we're not getting anything. So that tells us we got a problem with nine. Eight was fine from seven to eight. So we definitely have a problem between eight and nine and nine to 10 also a problem so we know the problem is nine. So if we go back to test point ground to verify, see here I'm on test point ground, come back up here to eight, and you have 32.6 volts, which is correct. And then on nine, we actually drop about 0.3 volts. So that is not right. 32.6, 32.3, not right at all. And then of course 40.07, which 10 cells would average to be right at 4.08. So right off, we know that the cell itself is fine because the series feedback all the way through to 10 is fine. But the feedback from these individual cell monitoring wires, we do have a bad connection somewhere between here and that cell for B9. So again, if we reference David's board layout, it's gonna be very handy to look at where B9 goes. So which pin does B9 go to? We trace this around like so. It's going to be our third wire from the left on our connector. That's going to be our red wire. Now we do have a good many red wires, so we have to trace it down from this connector here, of course. And by the way, if you found that board layout helpful, be sure to check out On The Bench. So this is just our Facebook page, but it's very helpful because it's easier to ask questions and share a quick video or link on here that you just can't do in the comment section on YouTube. And this also can help the whole on the bench community instead of just one commenter on YouTube. So I definitely tend to go more towards this because it helps more people. And obviously we can all help each other as well. But this is where David Keeler has shared the PCB layout. This is the Ego second gen board. He drew it up in paint.net and he shared it with us here. I was able to open it up in PhotoP. I mean, I just did that to share that you could also do it online like this if you didn't have paint.net just as an alternative. But it did work very well going through the layers. David spent a lot of time on this and was gracious enough to share it. You can cut on your layers for front and back, your traces, vias. So it's very, very nice. So definitely check it out and make sure you tell David thanks. So using a Gen 2 board is the way that I like to try to troubleshoot when I'm checking my individual cells. Of course, it's already got the silicone potting removed too that, that your board may or may not have removed yet. I did share a little bit about that in video number two, if you're interested. The silicone potting removal from the board. But what we have to do is trace down this red wire from this connector that was on the left. And it goes through this tube here where my thumb is. And it looks like it goes to the center of the board here. And we do have some silicone keeping these board halves together. Let's zoom in a little bit. I think we already see the problem. There it is right there. It is the red wire and nothing that I did just pulling on this would have separated that. There's plenty of slack there, but that happens to be the same red wire we're looking for. So whether this was a problem before with this pack and it just happened to make contact and work while I was testing it, or the more likely scenario, as much as I use this pack to plug up the BMS boards being tested, and I do mean like dozens and dozens of times. It's very possible pulling that wire did break it. But we got this silicone here and the wire for that connector for our middle temperature monitoring board is caught up in that silicone. 
let's go ahead and strip this wire back and get it soldered back in place and see if this is our problem. We're going to go ahead and strip the wire back. I'm going to put a little bit of flux here on the wire and the connection. I'm going to bring over the ISO tip cordless soldering iron. Thing does heat up pretty quick. It's ready to go. Tin the wire. Gonna make sure this solder's in good shape here on the tab. Yep, and you put it like so. And there we go. Push that back a little bit. And I'm going to have to pull this wire out of the silicone. It just got trapped on that right side there. It was embedded in the silicone. It just simply plugs into that connector, if you can see. I know it's probably hard to see that when we're pushing on it. Let me get it where you can see it better here. I just got to push it in like so. Just double check that it is seated properly. I can come back and silicone this if needed. But I think that's going to be fine. Let's clean this up a little bit and let's go ahead and test it. We we'll tested out with one of the known good boards that we knew tested well earlier. Moment of truth. All right. So we knew that one was good from earlier. That first repair board that we knew was good, but also did not check well earlier when the pack was giving trouble. Let's see how it does now. Awesome. So this is the board in question. The first one that was giving problems with this pack that that made me think the board was bad was it actually a repair after all after replacing that transformer absolutely the board was repaired just wanted to take time here to show in more detail going around and checking the individual cells because this was just too much to show in the last video so just decided to make one on it by itself going to go ahead and put this pack back together really quick I do want to take time to show here, I've mentioned the trace fuse in several videos over the years and have had to solder in a makeshift fuse on some of these when the trace fuse itself pops. But there's been a lot of comments back and forth and you'll see that in the Facebook group on the bench as well. But there's been a lot of talk about some of these newer packs having different fuses here. So, and W. Anthony Shelton shared a lot about it fairly recently with really good pictures of what he has had. And now these were 10 amp hour packs, so probably 10 amp hour and larger, like 12 amp hour. I don't personally have one, but as he was asking about these, I came in and talked about how it looked like a 60 amp SMD fuse. Just going by pictures, I was trying to figure it out and also wrongly suggested that it could be something like these little fuses or something here from Mauser. Just as an example, it would need to replace something, but I did put in there that I haven't run into it myself. Just commenting back and forth, trying to learn more together here. Anthony did a good bit of testing and sharing here. Stephen Waller also talked about his, and, and I think you did previously as well. But that's one I wanted to share here that I had seen something on YouTube in a newer style Makita pack. And that came from Tool Scientist. So I definitely wanted to share that video and some information. So Tool Scientist shared links to his 30 amps in that video. So that helped us locate the 60 amps. He actually shared some more pictures here as well that you might want to check out. Because this is very interesting how these packs do have a different protection on them. 
And if I click on this fuse really quick, I'll just show you a quick glimpse here without taking up too much time. This might not be interesting to everybody, but it is to me. So at first glance, it looks like these fuses can be deactivated like remotely on the T2 terminal. And it shows here like it's got a heater element that can possibly separate or diffuse here in between T1 and T3. We do have the layout or footprint here if you're interested as well. So that information is here and this is absolutely because of the hard work of many viewers working together as well as the hard work of someone like Tool Scientist that likes to share things he finds about packs as well. This is just a clip from that video where he does share that protection. It definitely helped us figure out more about our 60 amp on our board. I'm just going to put the screws back in the connector board here. I'll put the screws in this later, but one last check here with a battery cap that showed okay after a reset. So this board was acting kind of weird, showing a few bars green and then going red. After holding down the button like a reset, it did flash green and go to like three bars. After putting this battery on the charger, then it did indicate green and full charge level. After the battery pack's repaired, is it still good? Awesome. So I had just held this button down, so I'll show briefly here after this light goes out. Just hold it down for like three or four seconds. Here it just lit up green because everything's good. So I take it as like a test or reset in the Gen 3s, but not 100% sure as mentioned in the last video. But I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to have some links down in the video description of some tools and interesting items that I find very helpful on my workbench. Any of those links that you click on are affiliate links and they help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.